Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, I'm sure some of you are already aware of the attack on uh, Crimea uh, by Ukrainian forces, uh, no doubt helped by NATO as well, uh, obviously. Uh, and there are conflicting reports as to the damage that's been done and, of course, the number of missiles that were fired in at Crimea. I'm going to start off with the sun right here. Uh, raining fire, two Russian warships hit by storm shadow missiles as dramatic video shows massive Ukrainian strike on Crimea. Now, the strike doesn't actually show... Uh, it doesn't show the ships themselves being hit, uh, but it is believed that there, were, there was one submarine and one ship possibly uh, uh, hit during this particular attack on the area there. Uh, Russia claimed to have shot down quite a few of the missiles and uh, also Russian, uh, uh, according to the Russian update on this issue here, was that a total of 42 missiles were fired into uh, this part of uh, Crimea. And uh, this is the article here that goes a little bit more into detail about it. So the U Ukrainian armed forces carried out a combined attack on Crimea, which involved at least 12 aircraft. Nine aircraft, <coughs> excuse me, took off from Starokonstantinova, uh, presumably an Su-24M, an Su-27, two MiG-27s, uh, Uman, and an Su-27 from uh, Morgorod. The Storm Shadow uh, ADM-160 and Neptune missiles were launched along the uh, Zatko. Snegriva line, a total of 40 missiles were actually fired. Two missiles tried to hit the ships of the Black Sea Fleet in Sevastopol Bay. Both were shot down before reaching the target. Uh, the Skalp missiles attacked a shipyard. One hit uh, the pier and the second one did not fire its warhead. Uh, two Storm Shadow missiles destroyed the Black Sea Fleet building in the uh, city center. But the uh, back ones have been empty for a long time, so there are no losses other than destruction. Another one fell in the area of uh, Kazakia Bay, and there was no damage, although the enemy media placed great emphasis on this target. In the west, Crimea, a village uh, came under attack from Ukrainian Armed Force drones, and uh, the planes were shot down by Air Force defense on approach. A little later, several Neptune missiles fired from Odessa flew there and were shot down by our aerospace forces. So it continues on basically uh, showing that uh, they had great success on every level. The death toll, they say, is up to 133. I've actually seen a new report that's up to 137 people now, uh, with 154 people being injured. And of course, 154, you'd have to do the math on that there with a few more people that have actually died from that attack there inside of uh, uh, inside of uh, Russia there, the, the attack on the mall there. Uh, this again, just the same footage we'd already seen earlier there. Uh, also too, I wanted to share with you Romania. I want to thank Rosa for sharing some of this information with me here. Romania is building one of the largest airfields uh, that uh, in the year in Europe, and it is expected to be going to be used by NATO forces as a NATO base there. Uh, anybody that knows anything as far as Romania, it would be more strategically an asset for NATO uh, than most other countries in going against Russia, especially of trying to take back Crimea. And uh, according to the article here, it says here that various Roman news outlets recently provided an update on the construction underway at the base, citing comments and information obtained from Nikolai Kruto, the current commander of the Romanian Air Force 57th Air Base, uh, Mi uh, Mikhail, well, we won't even try to say his last name. Overall, the initiative will cost some 2.5 billion euros, <clears throat> just over 2.7 billion at current uh, conversion rates. <clears throat> paid for by the Ura Romanian government with work spread out over the next 20 years. Uh, once complete, the new base will be uh, enlarged to the size of a small city, encompassing an area roughly 2,800 hectares or 6,900 acres. <clears throat> Total perimeter of 30 kilometers, just over 18 miles. According to the Euro News Romania, 
the base will be able to accommodate 10,000 personnel from Romanian and NATO forces combined, as well as their dependents. Uh, there you have a just a little bird's eye view. You got the Black Sea right here. Uh, you have Romania, and of course there's Crimea. You can see why the strategic uh, the area of Romania for being able to uh, battle against um, uh, Russian forces definitely becomes critical. Lucrările la baza NATO au început cu infrastructura de bază, adică drumuri de acces și rețeaua electrică. And as they zoom in to show you where that base is there, close to the coastline of the Black Sea there, uh, which makes it very, very easy for uh, the uh, Crimea to come under attack by uh, NATO forces. So very interesting to see. NATO has definitely been preparing for war for quite some time. Uh, that's also uh, uh, an issue that Russian, uh, different uh, Russian spokespeople have been saying that NATO has been preparing for war for the last 10 years. They've been gearing up, getting ready for Russia. And of course, some of the NATO commanders saying that they are now ready <clears throat> to take on Russia in a war. Question is, are they really ready? Now, truly, NATO does have far more advanced weaponry than that of uh, Ukraine. And it would be a different picture when it comes to targets inside of Russia. Talk about Moscow and St. Petersburg being on major target and even Kaliningrad, as well as Crimea. This could be a crippling blow for Russia if NATO really does very actively get involved in this war. Uh, and if that ends up being the case, it could definitely uh, be a whole different scenario, but then again, Russia may pull out the big guns if that happens to be the case. Anyway, Israel summons Turkish envoy after Erdogan sends Netanyahu to Allah remark. The president is the last one who can speak about God over his support for Hamas, according to the Jewish state foreign minister. Israel's foreign minister has summoned the Turkish envoy for a serious reprimand over President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's verbal attack on the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Diplomatic tensions between the two countries have escalated since the Hamas-Israel conflict broke out last year. The Turkish leader has been among the harshest critics of Israel over the Gaza war. Says you uh, who support the burning of babies, murders, rapists, and mutilation of corpses by Hamas criminals, is the last one who can speak about God, Israel Kot stated. There is no God who can listen to those who support the atrocities and crimes against humanity committed by the barbaric Hamas friends. Uh, well, you know, I have to say that the, those that came in to do the, the, the killing inside of Israel definitely were pretty, pretty brutal and pretty uh, cruel without a, without a doubt. But when it comes to that burning of babies, that was done by the Israeli military when they fired those tanks in there. Uh, fired shells into those homes because there were terrorists as well as civilians, and that's what burned those children. It wasn't Hamas directly. Not to say Hamas is a good guy either, because they definitely are not. Uh, so, as far as the mutilation of corpses and things of that nature, there, I do not know the evidence that would be backing that there. But, uh, but at any rate, there, Erdogan though definitely in his comments sending. Sending Netanyahu to Allah lets you know he is definitely in favor for taking out the prime minister. Also, Israel tells the UN it will, won't approve uh, Anwar food convoys to, to the north of Gaza. Well, it's nothing new. Israel has been stopping aid from entering into Gaza and steadily bombing civilian locations and civilian infrastructure and, and of course, hospitals and all the like, saying the only way they can root out Hamas I guess it means to kill the civilians in order to get the, to get to Hamas. And uh, Netanyahu is sparing nothing in doing so. Then I got this post here from Charles. I want to thank Charles for sharing this with me here. This uh, Jewish lady here in New York is talking about they're ready to take over Gaza. Listen into this. Very interesting to just listen to what's actually said here. And say Israel's, Israel is kept with them. That doesn't make sense. This is our sovereign state. Would you go there? Of course. By the beach? Oh, for sure. Yes, my husband's also talking about uh, building. He has a, a yeshiva, a Talmudic Institute here. Uh, so building a branch in, uh, yes, in Aza. We have lists already about 500 families that are willing 
on the drop of a hat to just move into, uh, we have North, Central, and South uh, Gaza, and people are going to start building towns. We have names of the towns, we have where we're building them. It's, it's already being planned, and we have people signed up. You can't leave it without Jews in the Gaza Strip. It's too big a piece of land, it's too important for us to let it become Hamas town, as we call it, Philip terrorists. We love the Gaza Strip. There you have it there, plans already being made. <clears throat> no wonder why the annihilation of the Palestinians of Gaza is taking precedent. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.